if you want to hear the kinds of things that ChatGPT is coming up with, just to be your own judge of whether this is a threat to creative industries, you might want to take a listen. Hi, I'm Kelly Metzger. Welcome to this week's episode of Kelly and the Robots, where I read AI-generated stories. This week's episode is a bit of a journey in ChatGPT. My friend Curtis Perrin sent me um, a short story, but as I was reading through it, it started to take that structure of a summary of a story again. So then I decided to take that story and put it back into ChatGPT and ask it to create three scenes for me. I haven't figured out the prompts yet of how to get it to include the scenery, the thoughts of the characters, and them then expressing their thoughts or choosing what thoughts to express with words. But maybe I just have to give it those exact prompts, run the story through a few times and say, now take it this far, now go in this direction, now go in this direction. Maybe I'm not sending it through um, ChatGPT enough times to get what I want. In terms of like the scene of a screenplay, I can see a bit how this would be a threat to the screenwriters guild. Listen to it and be the own your own judge. And it even takes like a few times to come up with a, a good title. The first title that it came up with for this was Adventurous Sock Odyssey. And I was like, okay, mm, could you do something that has more with this quality and this quality? And then it's like, Portal, Socks, Discovery. I just wanted a three word title. So, you know, that's not a great title. And then I'm like, more creative. And so then the title that it finally came up with, Quantum Sockscape Expedition. So get cozy and let's begin. Once there was a scientist named Dr. Albert Newman whose luck had dried up like the deserts of Mars. His experiments failed, his theories were debunked, and his spirits were as low as the Mariana Trench. In search of solace, Halbert decided to take a break and spend quality time with his two bubbly kids, Ellie and Max. Scene one, discovery of the mismatched socks, setting a cozy living room scattered with pirate-themed toys on a rainy day. Ellie, frustrated, holding up a lone sock. Daddy, look, my sock-eating muster must be really hungry. It's back. Max, joining in, showing his mismatched socks. Mine too, Daddy. See, one from each pair is always gone. It's like a sock for a feast monster. Dr. Newman, kneeling down, intrigued. A sock monster, huh? Well, why don't we become sock detectives? We can use this scientific method to investigate this peculiar phenomenon. Ellie, like real scientists with experiments and stuff? Dr. Newman, exactly. Let's start by gathering all our mismatched socks. We'll create a hypothesis, observe, and record our findings. Science is all about solving mysteries. Max, can we make a sock monster trap? Dr. Newman, we certainly can try. First, let's gather evidence and look for patterns. Ellie, excitedly running to her room. I'll get my notebook. Max, following behind. And I'll get the rest of the missing socks. Scene two, experiment in the laundry room. Setting, a small cluttered laundry room with a humming dryer and shelves full of detergent and fabric softener. Dr. Newman, placing marked socks into the dryer. Now, let's see what happens to these socks. Our hypothesis, if there's a sock-eating monster, some of these socks will disappear. Max, scribbling in a notebook. What if they all just vanish into thin air? Dr. Newman, that would certainly be a scientific mystery worth exploring further. Ellie, what makes the socks disappear, Daddy? Dr. Newman, that's what we're trying to find out. It could be anything from a mischievous pet to, well, something 
much more extraordinary. They start the dryer and wait. Suddenly, the machine starts to glow and hum oddly. Ellie. Daddy, the dryer, it's glowing like a spaceship. Dr. Newman, examining the dryer closely. This is remarkable. It's not just a dryer. It appears to be a portal of some kind. Max. A portal? Like in the sci-fi movies? Dr. Newman. Exactly. Maybe it leads to where the missing socks go. This is an unexpected turn in our experiment. Scene three, the sock dimension. Setting. A fantastical, vibrant landscape filled with hills made of sock fabric and rivers of soft yarn. The sky is a patchwork of cloth. They climb through the dryer into a world that is bright and colorful, a stark contrast to their home. Max. Whoa, this place is amazing. Look at all the colors. It's like we're inside a rainbow. Dr. Newman, in awe. This is beyond my wildest scientific dreams. We're standing in what appears to be an alternate dimension. I declare this the sock dimension. Ellie, spinning around. It's so soft and fluffy everywhere. It's like a giant sock fort. Suddenly, a group of small playful creatures made of socks, the sock gnomes, appear, hopping and tumbling around joyfully. Sock gnome leader. Greetings, humans. Welcome to our world, where lost socks find no purpose. Dr. Newman, fascinated. Fascinated? You're the beings responsible for the sock disappearances? Sock gnome leader. Indeed, we bring them here to escape the mundane life of feet and shoes. Here, they become part of our world, full of joy and adventure. Next. So, you're not eating them? You're saving them? Ellie. They look so happy. Look, there's my polka dot sock swinging from that yarn tree. Dr. Newman, jotting down notes. This is a groundbreaking discovery. An entire ecosystem based on socks. The implications are immense. Sock gnome. Feel free to explore our world. Every sock has a story to tell. Dr. Newman. Children, our little scientific investigation has turned into an extraordinary adventure. Let's explore and learn as much as we can. Who knows what other secrets this dimension holds? Ellie, running towards a group of socks, playing in a band. Look! They even have sock music! Max, pointing to a distant hill. And over there, socks are having a race! Dr. Newman, smiling broadly. It seems our socks lead far more exciting lives than we ever imagined. This place is a paradise for them. Sock gnome. And it's all thanks to the mysterious ways of the dryer portal. It randomly chooses socks to bring joy and color to our world. Ellie. Can we visit again, Daddy? I want to see what adventures my other socks are having. Max. Yeah. I want to learn more about this place. Maybe we can help other socks find their way here. Dr. Newman. Absolutely. There's so much more to learn. This will be our little family secret. The sock dimension. Where our socks live out their wildest dreams. As they wander through this fantastical landscape, Dr. Newman and his children marvel at the sight of socks living in harmony and happiness engaging in activities they never would have imagined. This scientific adventure has turned into a magical journey, revealing a world of wonder hidden right inside their home. Okay, that was interesting. More of a children's story. Um, as I read through these, I wonder, is it ChatGPT that um, isn't that great? at giving me what I want, or is it me not knowing how to use this tool effectively to, to give it 
to teach it how to give me what I want. And if I put more energy and effort into teaching ChatGPT how to give me what I want, what's the like? What's my moral obligation as a creative professional? Should I teach this technology how to write a screenplay for me? Or should I say, no, that's a human's job. That is a great job. Part of me thinks that creative jobs, like, there's no, there's no, this technology doesn't stop you as a creative person from being creative. Nothing can stop you from being creative, but the amount of time that you have to invest in that. Creative jobs, on the other hand, have always been incredibly competitive. To get paid to have a, to be, to work creatively, you have to have a few things going for you. You have to have talent, yes, but a lot of people have talent. You also have to have skill, and that takes years of practice. And you also have to have luck. You have to have all those three things, talent, skill, and luck. And and then you have to compete with all the other people that also have talent, skill, and a little bit of luck. There's... As you're not entitled to a creative job just because you want one. <laughs> you got to be great. I don't think ChatGPT is great. I don't think it's taking away from creative jobs at this point. It could be an asset and you could it could help lay down the very first draft and then you can take it further as a writer. That's just my opinion at this point and I'm just at the beginning of exploring this tool. But in terms of your entitlement to these very rare jobs. You gotta be great. And there is always room for excellence in a creative field. There really is. If you are excellent, people want to work with you. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure if this technology is an existential threat yet. Um, it sure inspired me to be creative in different ways. Thanks for listening even to my rants, and um, tune in next week. Let's see if I can make these stories even better. 